Hello, this is the XMG Pro 16, and in the next few minutes, I'll show you how to access the internals if you want to expand the memory or the storage. Getting into the notebook isn't complicated. 12 Phillips head screws stand between you and the motherboard. First, pop off the rear exhaust vents one by one, holding them firmly with both hands. As you do that, apply some pressure to the bottom plate with your wrists. In my case, I just carefully lifted the cover and the internal clips were released. If this doesn't happen on your end, carefully twist the sides of the plate or use a thin plastic tool to fully pry the bottom off. Here's a look at the plate. Wow, this machine looks like a tank on the inside. Great job, XMG. As always, our first job is to disconnect the large 99.9 watt hour battery by pulling its connector downwards. Undo the four Phillips heads that secure the unit. The autonomous life is decent. Five hours and 16 minutes of 4K YouTube video playback on a single charge. Not bad considering the high res screen and the powerful CPU. The memory has a metal cap on top that could be lifted with the aid of a lever tool. Turning over the metal cover reveals a thick thermal pad for the upper RAM module, which is positioned lower than the other. The lower module relies on the many ventilation holes in the plate for cooling. This laptop is offered with either the Intel Core Ultra 9 275HX or the Core i913900HX. Our laptop has the Raptor Lake chip, and that's why the maximum amount of memory claimed by the manufacturer is 96 gigabytes of DDR5, 5,600 megahertz. The versions with the newer Aero Lake chip get a speed boost to 6,400 megahertz and support a max configuration of 128 gigabytes. Two metal plates, each held by three Phillips head screws, sit on top of the two 2280 M.2 slots. Note that the top screws are also shared with the fans. The storage slots differ based on the CPU you choose. For instance, one of the slots of the models based on the newer 275HX chip is for Gen 5 drives while the 13900HX machines like ours got two regular Gen 4 slots. Both metal shrouds include thermal pads for the SSD drives and the replaceable Wi-Fi 6E card. The central metal plate is fixed by another trio of Phillips head screws. The small panel cools the chipset and some inductors via thermal pads. The cooling seems massive. It has two fans alongside a pair of long and extra thick heat pipes shared between the processor and the graphics card. These pipes also connect the two top-mounted heat sinks. A sizable metal plate sits over each chip. As expected, the bigger one on the right cools the GPU and is accompanied by a small, dedicated heat pipe. To take out the thermal system, remove the fan connectors. You'll find three screws around each fan, though you've already removed one with the storage cap. The CPU plate is fixed by three screws, while the other one is secured by seven screws.
Let's pop the cooling unit with a lever tool below the CPU. Now it's the right time to mention that the fans could be removed separately. Now we have a clear view of the CPU and the GPU. Check out our full review at techpowerup.com.